This is the O Review Podcast. O Review. All right. Welcome to episode number 50. Uh, I was going to try to do something real special for this one, and I figured what better way than to go right back to the beginning and take a look at the grips. A few years ago, I decided that I was going to try to complete at least one of every pair, and at the time, they were in relatively low demand. Actually, more of the, the BMX crowd wanted them versus the Oakley crowd, so I was able to pick them up for not too, too much, uh, certainly a lot less than they're going for now, which is fortunate because I don't like paying more money than I have to. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the original grip, and we're going to kind of work forward until the end of the original grip era, and then I'll take a look at some of the uh, re-releases that happened a couple years ago, as well as the uh, gift with purchase and things like that. All right, so I'll get my cheat sheet over here. Uh, 1975, we had the Oakley Grip. And it came in this tall box, which had sort of a tab on the back, which could flip up and hang on a shelf. So you could have you know several of them hang on there. And they had a window here, so you could see the color of the grip, as well as the logo on it. And the grip actually came out in two different generations. The first one had the original Oakley logo with the uh, motocross icon. And the O in Oakley actually looked like uh, a wheel. It had some bridges on it and uh, some tread marks. And it was a little bit more stylized like that. Um, so that's actually not this one. Uh, this one here. So really it's just sort of, um, it has sort of a serif font. And it's a little bit more towards the original. Then later on, as the grips went on, they went to that traditional Oakley logo. So if you're familiar with the frog skin, the logo on that, which we've seen across everywhere, that one ended up on the second generation of the original grip. So grip originals were made out of something called unobtainium, which was uh, Jim's design. And we see that nowadays on the ear socks and things like that. Basically, as it gets wet, it actually gets tackier as opposed to more slick, so it's going to help um, for sunglasses stay on your head, and then for grips, it's really going to make sure that you're riding your bike and you're not going to slip off. So these were called uh, Unobtainium 49. So there's a few different numbers here, and basically, if the number is higher, it's going to be a little bit of a harder Unobtainium rubber compound. So when we start seeing things like the, the sleeves and the, the two-tone, there's actually going to be a different consistency on the grip versus the tread. All right, so moving up, 1978, we had the Grip 2. And again, it comes in this nice box, again, with the punch out here so you can hang it on. The window's there so you can see the color and the style. And what happened was, originally on the original Oakley Grip, it was not a cylindrical. It was actually more of um, a, a tab design. So it had sort of a, instead of being a circle, it kind of came out to a flat end on the edge. And that allowed you to basically form fit your hand. And if you look at the logo here, you'll notice that it makes that tab there. So as you're cupping your hand, there's a circular part here, but then it sort of tapers off into a flat edge. But unfortunately, um, that was great if you grabbed it dead on, but if it was rotated in any way or put on, uh, basically you could be grabbing the wrong portion of it and that became sort of awkward. So what they did is they did away with that and then um, going forward with most of the designs uh, we had a perfectly cylindrical grip design. So the grip 2 basically went right to that cylindrical design and again we have two generations with this. So this one just says Oakley 2 with an Arabic numeral and then this one is Oakley with a Roman numeral. All right, so basically the Grip 1 and the Grip 2 were both Unobtainium 49, although later ones sort of moved to a uh, sort of a softer rubber, and basically it, um, it just allowed it to be a little bit more flexible, so it would either go onto your bike easier or be able to be felt easier. All right, so now we move forward to 1980, and we have two different designs that are going to sort of play, one plays off the original Grip and one plays off the Grip 2. So we have the Grip number 3. And uh, basically this one is completely different. This looks like you took a ball of Play-Doh or clay and squished it in your hand. And then when you let go, you have this grip here. So um, obviously you can't, uh, you need to have the appropriate ones of these because they are mirror images of each other. And basically they perfectly fit in your hand. So they have the, the knuckle treads here the area that's going to go around your palm 
And if you grab them, they just feel like absolutely perfect. They do have the same problem with the original grips where they have to be exactly perfect because obviously they're not going to fit in any other configuration. Um, and unfortunately, these were sort of bootlegged or copied quite a lot. You'll see a lot of, um, if you go on eBay looking for Grip 3, you'll see uh, like Oakley Grip 3 and there'll be uh, a lot of other non-brands. Um, a lot of them will still be vintage, but they'll be vintage knockoffs for what that's worth. All right, so these were Unobtainium 52, which again is going to be a little bit harder than the original grit 2 grips. So it's going to be a little bit tougher, it's going to last a little bit longer, but it's going to be a little less forgiving when you're riding. Then the second one that came out that year was the Grip 0.5. And you see here, um, a very, very simple design. The Grip 3 and the Grip 0.5 both came in just poly bags. They didn't have any sort of fancy boxes or anything like that. So they just came in like the very inexpensive uh, plastic bag. Um, but this one is has no sleeve on it. It um, sort of has an indented tread as opposed to a tread that kind of comes out of the grip, like the grip 1 and 2. And then it just says the word Oakley 0.5 on this. Um, so this is Unobtainium 45, which is going to be similar to the later models of the grip 2. So again, it's going to be a little bit softer, a little bit more um, forgiving when you're riding. So this will go onto your bike a little bit easier. It'll feel a little bit softer compared to the much harder uh, unobtainium on the grip three. All right, so now we move to the F1 grip. And from here on out, for the most part, they moved to these hexagonal boxes. And the design of these boxes actually translated into the very early eye shapes too. So before they went to the plastic box, uh, they actually had a uh, red and white box with uh, the classic logo. So they kind of had this consistent across a lot of the products around the, the mid 80s to early 80s. So the F1 grip system, had a two-tone grip, so there was a sleeve on it. So the sleeve was actually a little bit harder than the grip itself. So this is gonna hold up a lot more than the grip itself. So instead of having all the same material and having it degrade over time, the sleeve, which can be replaced, um, is gonna hold up a little bit tougher, and then if it does wear out, you just take it off and you can put a new one on. So the F1 uh, basically had uh, the, all the treads are going to be part of the sleeve itself and there are some indentations on the underlying grip to help hold it in place uh, but basically it's going to be sort of uh, this two-tone design which would come in various different colors so I have the the white and blue one here um, but it did come in a lot of the colors you see here like the yellows and the reds and things like that all right so now we move to 1982 with the B1B and we've seen the B1B a lot lately, not only because of the resurgence of the collector's grip, but we've also seen like the Holbrook and the Frogskin B1B design, the B1B iPad case and things like that. So even though it's only one of many of the grips, that one has seemed to be chosen as the, the modern resurgence of uh, the design. So this is the original box. It's a red box with white lettering. And then when it was re-released, -re -re it was a white box with red lettering. So again, not only did it come out with the hexagonal box, but it also came out with one where you could have extra sleeves. So since the sleeves could wear out, even though they were a little tougher, you could buy boxes with spares. And then if the sleeve wore out, you just take it off or cut it off, put the new one on, and you're back in business. So the regular box just came with a pair of grips, but this one came with some accessory sleeves as well. Uh, bless you. Thank you. And, uh, you know, it has some cool right up on the back with some diagrams as well as holes so you can figure out what color you're getting. Um, so I currently have the originals in blue with yellow sleeves as well as red with yellow sleeves. And the cool thing is there's this donut here. So it's sort of a, like a neoprene um, gasket which will protect your knuckles so as you're riding you're not rubbing against raw rubber and getting a blister. Uh, back when I used to ride uh, just... You know, children's bikes. Uh, I'd always have that problem. I'd always have these blisters happening on my thumbs just from riding and rubbing against those rubbers. So that gasket's kind of a cool uh, touch. All right, moving forward, 1983. Now we have the B2. And the B2, uh, I'm most proud of this box because it's in absolute mint condition and um, basically sat in someone's closet for 20 plus years. So I'm trying to keep that as pristine as possible. And the B2, if I can find it, it's right here. It's sort of a resurgence back to the Grip uh, 2. Um, so the tread's a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter. It actually has the same tread design as the B1B, but it doesn't have a sleeve. 
So as such, it's a little bit um, simpler, a little bit more inexpensive. It still does have the neoprene donut. So as you see, every time they add another uh, addition, they either work on the previous design or either add or remove something. So no sleeve, but still has the donut. Um, so that's sort of just another iterative design for the B2. All right, so both the B1B and the B2 were on Obtanium 49, so it's a little bit softer. Uh, the F1s obviously have that harder tread here, but not so much on the B1B and the B2. All right, nearing the end now. So now we have the O-wing grip, and these were, did away with the boxes. They basically just had this clip here with a hole on it so you could hang it. So I'm guessing the grips were kind of on their way out and they were trying to reduce real estate, taking up all these boxes and whatnot. So they just wanted to have these hanging on the shelf so they could just be grabbed off or whoever wanted them. Uh, so the O-Wings still have that neoprene donut, but they have this little tab here, which, uh, to be honest, I don't know what that's for. I'm sure someone will tell me. Uh, but basically it just sort of goes on the edge of your hand and it kind of adds either an accent or sort of something that's going to help with whatever. Uh, another thing I noticed, and this actually just came to my attention um, after the point where I decided to do this video, but before, thankfully, I completed the video, uh, someone sent me a picture of a B2 grip, which also had a tab here. And it, it sort of all made sense because the initial colors of the O-wing were sort of just, you know, generic, regular colors that, you know, things that weren't too um, bright. They were sort of just more standard solid colors. But later on, they started coming out with like some very bright neon colors. And I know a lot of the O-Wings had that, and I heard I only had heard that the O-Wings had those bright colors. But the picture they sent me was a B2 grip in neon pink with the O-Wing tab. So that sort of all made sense because all the later grips, not just the O-Wing, but other ones, started having some neon colors. And then they also moved to that same uh, clip design. So then that was it for grips. That was 1984. We didn't see anything until 2010 when we had the very limited edition B1B grip. And, again, those weren't for public consumption. You couldn't buy them until a couple years later when we had a gift with purchase during the holiday season where if you spent $150, you got a free pair of grips. And the really cool thing is that they came back with the original hexagonal box. Um, this time, white with red text, just to differentiate them from the various other original grips that we had. The only difference, or a few different differences, is that um, the donut is, is horrible. It's a, if you look at the original B1B, it sits pretty much nice and firm against the edge of the grip here. And it's also a two-tone. There's sort of a black undercurrent here as well as a colored sheath on top. This one is just one, basically one piece here. And it doesn't fit close to the grip. It kind of flares up. And pretty much all the ones I have, that was not too bad. But if you can see, it's not it's symmetrical in any form. Uh, basically, it's, it's, it's not the same quality. On the original grips, in order to prevent dirt from getting in the hole here, they actually sold these crud plugs. And these came in several different colors to match the actual grip that you have. But basically, it would just sort of insert into that tab and just keep dirt and crud from getting inside your grip. So uh, that's basically what that hole is for. The hole's also good for letting air out as you're putting this onto your bike so that way it doesn't have any sort of vapor lock. So these came out in a few different colors. The gift with purchase came out in red, purple, and blue. And then later on, there was a couple other editions that were not available. So there was the, uh, the green St. Patrick's Day themed ones, the Valentine's Day ones. Um, there's also a yellow one, which was for a charity for an athlete who was injured and Oakley sent them a whole box of these grips to resell. And then that, all the profit basically went towards his re rehabilitation. There was also a, uh, a bright neon yellow one, too, for another athlete who decided, um, basically, he was given some because he liked to have the uh, a consistent theme in his collection of bright neon. And then that was it for grips. Uh, that's all we've seen so far. Uh, I'm hoping that they come out with a few more, but they did come out with this, which was a grip-themed multi-tool. So basically what we have here is we have something very similar to the tread on either the B1B or the B2. And if you unscrew one of these edges here, we have a few different tool tips. And then the tools will go into the side here, and then you can use it as sort of a multi-tool where you can have a few different screwdrivers. And uh, basically it looks like there's Allen wrenches, flatheads, and Phillips screws. So 
kind of a cool thing. It's got a nice heft to it. Um, I really like the fact that Oakley is doing these kind of these crazy, not really freebies, but at least, you know, gift with purchases. So if you do buy enough, you can get one of those at no additional cost. And I really like the look of that thing. It's, uh, it's kind of a nice solid piece. So it fits well with my grip collection inside my shelf. And uh, I really like the way it looks. All right, so that's basically it. So we have, uh, you know, Grip 1, Grip 2, both on Obtainium 49. Uh, the later Grip 2s had Unobtainium 45, so it was a little bit softer. And then we had the Grip 3 and the Grip 0.5 in 1980. And again, this was uh, Unobtainium 52, and this was Unobtainium 45, a little bit softer, a little bit harder. Then we moved up to the F1 Grip, which had the Unobtainium 60 sleeve, very tough, as well as the Grip itself, which was just a uh, Unobtainium 49, so this one's a little bit softer. Then we moved up to 1982, the B1B. So that added a, it kept the sleeve under a sort of softer and obtainium, but added a donut. Then we have the B2, uh, and this uh, gets rid of the sleeve, but keeps the donut. And then we had the O-Wing, which basically, again, didn't have a sleeve, but kept the donut, but then moved to this clip design and added sort of an accent flare there. And there you have it. Uh, Really, really like having all these. I'm glad I could show them off to you. I'm glad I have a good, fair representation of everything we've seen here. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, hope you have a good day. Thanks.